Today, our main goal is to discuss many examples of piracy or pirates from certain periods of time in U.S. history. The three specific areas of piracy were on the ocean, river and great lakes, and modern day piracy. Merriam-Webster defines piracy as an act of robbery on the high seas, also an act resembling such robbery. A pirate is one who commits or practices piracy. After the golden age of piracy, piracy on the ocean continued on the coast of North America up until the late 1870s. Since our main focus is to look at specific pirates that lived in this area, we will look at legendary French pirate Jean Lafitte, also known as the King of Barataria. There is not much known about his origin, some say he may have came from France, others say he may have came from a French colony. But he did have a brother named Pierre Lafitte, in which they both conducted acts of piracy together. He was known for piracy in the Gulf of Mexico, where he led hundreds of skilled sailors into the capture of foreign goods. They would smuggle these goods around, especially in New Orleans, where they had secret warehouses and colonies built. One of these colonies was called the Kingdom of Barataria, which was also a large illegal slave trading operation. Lafitte was obviously considered a major criminal at this time, up until the War of 1812. General Andrew Jackson was in need of soldiers and materials at the time. Lafitte offered help to Jackson after some consideration and desperation when Jackson accepted his help. The Battle of New Orleans uh, proved to be a great success for the U.S. against the British, uh, thanks to Lafitte and his men's skills. In return, Jackson pardoned Lafitte and his men for their criminal past, uh, thus making Lafitte an American hero. After the American Revolution, a form of piracy on major rivers like the Mississippi and southern Mississippi started to appear. This was known as river piracy. This occurred in an isolated American frontier where there was little to no government control. Bands of river pirates would raid ships for loot and supplies and usually murder the people on board and then tried to sell the ship that they captured. Some bands of river pirates also took up the practice of drilling holes in them so that they would sink, uh, making the ships easier to capture and raid. These pirates took advantage of the landscape by hiding in natural obstacles such as swamps, marshes, islands, and caves. A great example of where these river pirates would meet or hide is at Cave and Rock, found in southern Illinois, which acts as a major meeting place for pirates and other criminals at the time. River piracy occurred up until the mid-1830s. The Great Lakes piracy occurred from the 1900 to 1930, especially on Lake Michigan. These pirates were mainly concerned in the seizing of lumber, prohibition liquor, and even religious reasons. 
Warring Darren Seavey was a classical example of piracy in the Great Lakes. Born in Portland, Maine in 1867, he grew up to be a very experienced sailor. When he failed at becoming rich during the Klondike Gold Rush, he took up the op occupation of piracy on the Great Lakes. Seavey had a legal shipping operation. However, he made many midnight heists at warehouses and supported the prostitution trade. He was infamously known for moon cussing, in which he moved around the guy lights so that ships would accidentally sail into rocks. From there, his men and he would seize goods from the wounded vessels. Seavey was caught in Chicago and charged with acts of piracy in 1908 but the charges were later dropped. He later went to work on in the United States Marshal Service and died on February 14, 1949. Modern piracy today is nothing like the golden age of piracy. The U.S. currently focuses its attention on combating piracy in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. Specific countries that are hotspots in this area are Somalia, Indonesia, and Bangladesh. A somewhat recent event with modern piracy and U.S. involvement is the Maersk, Alabama hijacking. This event occurred from April 8 to 12 in 2009 when a small group of armed Somali pirates seized the cargo ship of Maersk, Alabama. This ship was about 280 miles southeast off the Somali coast. Although the crew had received anti-pirate training beforehand, the pirates s still managed to get onto the ship and hold part of the crew hostage. Part of the ship's crew that wasn't taken hostage managed to capture the pirate's leader. In an attempt to get Captain Phillips back, the leader of Maersk, Alabama. The crew planned a trade-off between them and the pirates. However, the pirates didn't obey the request and still had Captain Phillips hostage. He was then taken to the ship's lifeboat with the pirates and drove it away from the main cargo ship. The USS Bainbridge and the USS Halliburton destroyer were dispatched in response to the situation. The end result was the use of U.S. Navy SEAL snipers to kill three of the pirates on board of the lifeboat. The fourth pirate was taken into custody after negotiating a ransom, and Captain Phillips was successfully rescued from, by the U.S. Navy from the pirates. This event was the United States' first successful pirate seizure of a ship since the 19th century.